hi guys welcome back to my channel yeah so in today's topic i'm gonna be talking about how to know if you qualify for for canada express entry i'm gonna be talking about everything express entry because i've been receiving so many messages so many dms so many emails about canadian immigration yes so i'm gonna be talking about uh federal skill, skilled worker in particular so today i'll be teaching you how to know if you qualify for this uh, immigration pathway to Canada so I'm gonna be teaching you everything you need to know at least to get you started and uh, yeah at the end of this video I'm, I'm sure you would be able to know if you truly qualify or not and some other areas you need to work on to be able to qualify for uh, Canadian immigration yeah but before going straight to today's topic I would like to thank everyone that signed up for this course guys the turn up is amazing the turn up and up till today people are still signing up for the course and yeah the turn up has been very 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 amazing and thank you so much guys yes and um aside that the reviews have been getting on this course the reviews so far has been overwhelming and i sincerely appreciate you guys and again i've also been receiving good news yes guys another good news came in uh, i think on friday yeah so one of uh, the students that bought the course uh, he actually reached out to me sending in his own testimonies so uh his own testimony rather so i'm going to be posting it on the screen for you guys to see so it is also my joy to uh, have created this course and uh, it is also my joy to see people getting results from this course and yeah another person also reached out to me on whatsapp that uh, she was also able to get a supervisor and i'm super excited that this course is getting people results yes and again i would like to thank uh, my sisters here yeah. although i don't we've never met before i don't even know them and guys you wouldn't believe uh, i think two of them or so uh sister I, I i can't remember her name yes but i'm sure if you are watching me right now thank you so much and what she did i think there are two actually they referred uh their friends they, they actually introduced this course to their friends and in fact their friends bought the course even before them yes their friend got the course even before them and their friends was able to uh give them review ahead of uh ahead of time yeah so thank you so much sis i sincerely appreciate your referral thanks for referring your friends to me i think uh sister i i I think Ada, Ada or, or Ada is a, or Ada will be. I'm not too sure. And if I did not pronounce your name correctly, please pardon me. I'm so, so super sorry for that. And my other sister as well, I can't remember her name. And I'm sure you'll be watching me right now. I'm super, super grateful. Thank you so much for the referral. Uh, so far, like I said earlier, the review on this course has been super amazing and I so much thank every one of you that signed up. The turn up, in fact, is overwhelming. And if you are still out there, you are looking forward to getting a fully funded master's or PhD program in Canada, probably you are not financially capable. You are not financially capable to sponsor yourself uh, through school there is an opportunity for you to study for free in canada and still get paid while you study yes it's good to good it's too good to be real and i noticed so many people don't know about these opportunities uh in canada there are so many opportunities here in canada that you guys need to know about and you have nothing to lose you can imagine the joy of you being a student and you are still getting paid every month till you complete your program if your program is a two years uh, program you are going to be paid every month till you complete that program so if your program is for phd candidates in the house your program is definitely four years and yes you're going to be paid every month it's like being paid a salary being earning a salary every month till you complete that four years and on top of that when you get to canada you still have the opportunity to increase 
this funding worked. Yeah, there are a lot of like there are so many scholarship opportunities even when you get to Canada here. Yeah? And as you are still having the funding, you can still apply for other scholarships on campus just to boost your monthly uh, stipend. And yeah, I was able to do that and my total uh, funding worth then was around 45,000 uh, Canadian dollars. Yes, guys, and you can even do more than that. So you have nothing to lose and yeah, everything you need to get yourself a fully funded master's or PhD program, programs in Canada. Everything you need is in this course. You don't even need to ask me any questions because everything you need from A to Z is in this course. And yeah, if you are so much interested in getting started, yeah, it's admission period in Canada. And if you are willing to resume next year, maybe next year summer or next year fall, this is the right time for you to start. This is the right time for you to start. It's, it is admission period in Canada and admission will soon uh, will be closing probably in February or in March. So this is a good time for you to start uh, pushing out your application out there. Yeah, so if you're interested in this course, I'm going to be dropping the link in the description down below and uh, make sure you enroll as soon as possible. And guys, a good news again. Yeah, so many people reached out to me actually because the offer for this course was uh, out. It was out for some couple of days, but now some people reached out to me due to financial hindrance or due to financial reasons. They said they were pleading for me to actually extend this offer date and I've also considered these people because I understand fingers are not equal. So yeah, so basically now the offer has been extended for another I think four to five days. So this is a very, very good opportunity for you to grab this offer before the timer hits zero. And guys, this is going to be the last offer we are going to be extending yes guys and uh, finally if you are a uh, hnd older probably hnd or ond older before getting this course please make sure you send me an email i'm going to drop my email in the description down below so make sure you send me an email before proceeding to get this course there are so many things i need to discuss with you so yes uh, make sure you send me an email before proceeding to uh, get this course yeah so back to today's uh topic so i'm going to be talking about canada immigration we basically we have different routes i mean different pathways to canadian immigration so we have the uh, majorly we have the the common one actually do we have the federal skill workers and uh, we have the cec which is a canadian experience class we have the pmp which is otherwise known as provincial uh, nomination program yeah but the the most common one is the federal skilled workers and this one is basically for uh, internationally trained um, people that is if you have previous work experience if you have um, professional work experience in your own country yeah this program is for you and uh, you also need to determine if your work experience falls under the required knock probably i'm still gonna show you on the screen yeah i'm gonna be demonstrating everything on the screen as well so if you can um, achieve this that your knock or your previous work experience in your own country falls under this yeah that's a great uh, plus for you and again now as you see as we all see the trend of uh, the CRS score we uh, sorry guys I need to explain this again there is another there's something we we know as uh, the CRS which is the I think comprehensive ranking system so we call it CRS and this is like a benchmark we have a benchmark that is you must have um you must have exactly that point or above the point you must not have less than this point this point is like the benchmark that people must have before they can be qualified for canadian express entry and um as at last year the points was still as low as 440 the point was still as low as 440 so basically anyone 
who is having 440 and above anyone who is having 440 and above will automatically get what we call invitation to apply which is i otherwise known as ita there are so many factors like let me put it that way there's so many factors that you are going to consider that would give you the points to achieve this benchmark point as at last year the point was as low as 440 but lately the point is now as high as 470 and above 470 and above is extreme is now very very crazy and i could remember sometimes last year even last two years i was shouting about this i was i was basically shouting about this that everyone if you know you are qualified so many and again it's lack of information actually if you know you are qualified act fast before it's too late so guys and if you're also out there you're gonna be learning a lot today so if you know from my video if you know you are qualified please 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 guys act as uh, uh, as soon as possible because anything can happen starting from next year things will definitely change so i would advise you also start as soon as possible so like i said earlier the point is now as high as four 70 and above in fact they take for uh, they took 477 478 and above like that but yeah i also saw that people are recently happy because the point is as low the point suddenly dropped to four i think 467 or so or 468 i can't remember very well so they were happy and it is always like this because when the point drops like this what is going to happen next year in fact people should be prepared for the worst for next year in fact it might be as high as high as 480 yes that's just a fact so without uh wasting too much time if you have hnd guys please take note of all this point i'm going to start from the lowest to the highest certificate so if you have hnd if you have hnd yes and you have definitely if you have hnd hnd you already you already you are having ond as well so there is something we call two or more certificates and i'm sorry to divert to this people always believe that those that is having masters are the only one that qualifies to apply for um canada express entry this is very 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 wrong even if you have a uh, HND. If you have HND degree for Nigerian applicants, yeah, if you have an HND degree for Nigerian applicants, you are also qualified to apply for uh, express entry. And there's something we call two or more certificates while applying. I'm going to show you everything shortly. There's something we call two or more certificates, and uh, basically you can use this to also apply. And one thing you need aside and the hnd i mean the ond and the hnd can be termed as two or more certificates so if you have ond and hnd you are good to go another thing you need to have is a very high uh IELTS score which is the ielts score so so far you can have like uh, at least my nine ielts score which i'm gonna be demonstrating i'm gonna be uh, simulating or the point for you so you would also see uh, how everything works yeah so basically having ond and hnd can be termed as two or more certificates or if you have ond and a bsc you can also combine this together again or also and um yeah again for someone with bs i've talked about uh hnd ond so uh, for hnd ond you need a very high IETS score and again like i said earlier you know i talked about um the crs score now is extremely high as high as 470 and above yeah so now the government of canada now they introduced another um another way of boosting your crs score since it's not very high so you can also boost your crs score by registering for this french exam and this french exam is called the tef uh, TEF, which is a French language exam, just like the IETS. So, if you also have this French language exam, I'm not sure of the points that is now assigned to. I think uh, 25 or 15 points. I'm not too sure, guys. 
but yeah we can also find out when i share my screen with you guys now so with this um french exam you can also boost your crs score yes guys so after using what i'm about to show you now and you feel your score is very low you can immediately register for the uh, french exam and guys if you are not following me on instagram you can follow me on instagram at uh, nigerians iphone in iphone canada nigerians in canada basically i'm gonna drop my instagram handle in the description below and the reason why i'm suggesting you follow me is because i've shared a lot of information about this french exam i've shared uh, some i've shared a lot of information on how to get started i've shared a lot of information of the on the apps that you can download on your phone yeah and basically that you download your phone and start your french uh language journey yeah basically you can start your french language journey with all these apps so if you are not following me on instagram check my instagram handle at the description box below and yeah scroll to my page to see all the apps and see all the free resources that are available for you to start learning french yes guys so with this french exam too you can boost your score and it's very important because the point that is attached to this exam is very very high yeah so i'm done with ond and uh hnd a candidate so now let's move to bsc uh degree order if you are also having a bsc degree order, and if sorry if you're having only bsc you can still be qualified for uh canada presidency under the federal skill worker so basically as a bsc order what you need is you don't need a master degree if you don't have one you don't need to go and enroll for a master degree but what you need is another certificate you know i made mention of something that two or more certificate is required yeah so as a bsc order you also need to get another certificate to make it two or more i mean your bsc plus one more certificate just to get that point yeah so basically the um available certificate that you can use and which is which is all can also be evaluated by these evaluating bodies you know we have so many evaluating bodies and if you are from nigeria you would also know about the iq as i think I, iq as and the west so those are the two evaluation bodies that i know and hopefully they are the only ones in nigeria i'm not too sure about that though yeah but even from other countries and you are watching me you also need to get your own evaluation body you also need to determine uh, which certificate is acceptable by this evaluation body yeah uh, by this evaluation bodies rather so basically the two most uh, common certificates that are acceptable by these evaluation bodies are the uh, acca i think this one is for the accounting uh, field guys the acca simply means the uh, association of of chartered certified accountant so basically guys the acca simply means the association of chartered certified accountants yeah i had to check the mini yeah because i'm not so familiar with these things so uh, association of chartered certified accountants so that's what the acca means and guys forget about your background anyone can actually uh, put in for this yes and um, the second option is a bcs certificate in it yeah bcs certificate in it is actually a british um certificate is actually a british body actually a british body uh, which is a bcs certificate in it i'm gonna also be dropping the description below in uh, i'm gonna be dropping the the description in down in the uh, box below and again if you um yeah if you're interested in these certifications uh and if you're interested in getting the certificates yes you can uh, either send me a dm on instagram or send me an email yes i have a private group that you can join and uh, just to assist you in studying and assist you in getting started yes guys so these are basically the two certificates that you can get with your bsc certificate to make it uh, two or more uh, certificate and then yes you also need um with these certificates you also need a very high 
IETS score, which is a, a highest score. I'm gonna be just saying IS score. So you're gonna be you're you're gonna need a very high IS score as well. And even after getting this IS score, you still feel you you don't have enough points. Yes, you can write the French exam. Yeah, you can as well write the French exam. Yes, guys. So that one aside for the BSc bsc uh older so basically uh let me recap from the beginning for hnd i said if you have ond and hnd yes all you need to all you need to qualify is to get um and higher is to get a very good score in ietes exam and also if that the point is not enough you can also opt in for the french exam which is a tef exam so basically for the bsc bsc you also need one more certificate and uh which is the either you get the acca certificate or the bcs uh certificate in it yes guys so that one aside and also you need a very good score in IETS exam and if the score is not if the total points is not enough you can also opt in for the french exam just to boost your um points then after that so let's let's move to master's candidate so if you have if you already have a master's degree yes you can also write uh, you also need a very good score in you also need a very good score in your IET exam and if this point is not enough you can also opt in for the french uh exam and everything is going to be based on how you calculate your points and everything i'm going to be showing you how to go about everything in fact you can also start playing with this um online calculator you can start playing with it and see your opportunities and also see the areas or what you need to get in addition to what you already have so that as to boost your uh, CRS score yes guys so you need to start acting as soon as possible for the French exam like seriously I understand the fact that it's not easy to start learning uh, a new language but if you are out there and you are willing to uh, you are just willing to do something you are willing to do what it takes to leave your own country or to seek a better future not just for yourself but for the sake of your born and unborn children guys this is a very great opportunity for you to start uh doing so yeah uh, so with that being uh said so i still there are a lot of opportunities if you study in canada actually you don't need to go through all the stress yeah and that's the advantage of studying in canada immigration in canada to study has been known to be uh, to be the easiest yeah let me say to be the easiest means of becoming a canadian permanent residence and i must have mentioned this in my previous video and i'm gonna still be repeating myself again if you are a, a student here in canada if you finish here in canada and if you finish your master's degree here in canada it's an edge for you because you're gonna your point is gonna be very high and i'm gonna show you the reason so that you guys too can see yeah having a canadian certificate in fact is a very very uh is an edge for you having a canadian certificate is going to boost your score and if you also finish maybe you finish uh your studies you'll be able to write your all you just need is to write IETS and apply directly for your permanent resident and yeah if you are lucky enough you're able to get a job immediately after graduation well guys you even be, you have more than the points that is required there are a lot of benefits uh when you study in canada you don't need to go through all the stress it's it is just straightforward another point again is that age is also a factor and also you're gonna see everything we are gonna be discussing in detail for everything so age is also a factor and uh, i'm begging you guys if you are there watching me and you are less than 30 years of age if you are less than 30 years of age this is a golden opportunity for you don't wait till you are above 30 before you start your immigration um, journey in few years time now everything will become very very challenging yes guys and i want everyone to take this opportunity before it's too late yes guys so 
now i'm going to be showing you everything i've been discussing i know there are so many people out there they still don't understand everything i've been saying yes guys you would understand better and i'm going to be sharing my slides and yes guys i'm currently working on um an ebook yeah basically an ebook and yes guys it's gonna be for free i'm gonna give everyone for free so this this ebook is is for newbie that don't know anything about canadian immigration and they are willing and are ready to uh, come to canada if you are there you don't know anything about it yeah just watch out for my ebook it's gonna be for free totally for free so that you get started uh somewhere so guys without being said uh, i'm gonna be sharing my screen now so you can start i guess you know search uh, let's search crs yeah this is crs calculator so click on it and so you're gonna see it, it will be the first on the list which is a comprehensive ranking system the crs2 so this tool is basically used uh is used rather to calculate your your crs score i mean the points i i talked about the other time so when you click on this so here is the comprehensive tool and everything so you're gonna scroll down and this is where it is uh you'll be starting and guys, uh, I also for, I also forget to mention that if you are married, being married, you drop your points. You are gonna lose points for being married. And as if you are single, you are not gonna lose any points. But if you are married, uh, you are gonna lose points. And we will be demonstrating everything, and you will see. And like I said earlier, the reason why age can affect your points, and we are gonna see it again, is that if you are thirty years and above. If you are 30, you lose 5 mark, marks. If you are 31, you, you lose 10 marks. If you are 32, you lose 15 marks. Like on and on and on like that. So that's why I'm pleading to everyone in the house. If you are less than 30, this is a very good chance for you to start as soon as possible. So let's start. So what is your marital status? I'm going to assume this is single. A single is applying. So yeah this is never married or single so how old are you so now i'm gonna be working like just let me say let, let's choose someone who is i will assume someone who is less than 30 is applying so still the same let me choose 29 is less than 30 you can choose any age it's still the same mark is the same point so let me choose 29 is your uh what sorry what is your level of education so and you need to you need to um read this clearly sometimes it might be referring to your level of education in canada so you need to actually read this clearly so what is your level of education enter the highest level of education for which you earn a canadian degree diploma or certificate or add an uh, educational credential assessment eca if you did or had an educational credential assessment eca if you did your uh, study outside canada so yes so note a canadian degree diploma or certificate must either um have been earned at an accredited canadian university college uh, trade or technical school they're asking for your highest level of education if you check this second point uh for here they said any canadian degree definitely you did not have any canadian degree so you you did not meet this first point but this second point add an evaluation sorry add an education credential assessment so basically you are going to be assuming that you've already submitted your evaluation to WES or to iqas for evalu uh, to evaluate your credentials so you actually meet uh this second point so you're gonna this is where i said you're gonna choose i'm starting with two or more certificates you know i said the other time that so much certificate if you have ond and hnd is time as so so much certificate or bsc uh and other certificate that i mentioned is to almost certificate so you can see a doctoral you can see phd and uh i forgot to make mention of this if you have a phd degree yes it, this is an edge for you 
because phd having a phd degree you are gonna have the highest points ever so if you have a phd degree is a plus for you so yeah so let me pick um let me pick two or more certificates so basically if you have a bachelor's degree and other certificate you are still gonna choose two or more certificates so let's take two or more certificates now so this one for said have you had any canadian degree diploma certificate you don't have any canadian degree diploma or certificate so you're gonna pick no so here official languages um Canada's official languages are English or French. That was why I said that if it is required, this one is a uh, TEF exam, why this one is a normal IETS exam. So you need to submit a language test results that are less than two years. So remember guys, when you are writing IETS, your result is valid, valid for two years old. Mm -hmm. So they are less than two years old for all programs under express entry even if english or french is your first language so are your test results less than two years old you're gonna pick yes which language test did you take for your first official language if it is is you choose this if if it is uh tef which is a french test you choose this so let's choose IELTS. We are assuming it's IELTS. So here, guys, uh, you are gonna assume you are gonna be assuming an uh, a highest point. This is where you are gonna play with uh, your IELTS result. So you just assume, okay, just let's assume I'm having this IELTS result. You understand? Just assume points for this. So then, before it used to be your uh, the minimum point you should have for IELTS is 8777. Seven, seven. That is, you must have 8 in listening, you must and you must have 7 7 in orders. That is, 7 in speaking, uh, 7 in reading, and 7 in writing. But now that the point is not extremely high, you should try as much as possible to have a high score, guys. Right? So now let me play with this a little bit. So let me take um so now you're gonna see the power of having a high IETS score. Let me take the normal benchmark, which is the 877. So let's use seven, let's assume I'm having seven in speaking, listening, I'm having um okay. I said listening must be eight. So let me put eight point zero. Reading seven between seven and seven point five is still okay. Writing seven. So now I'm um, I've assumed eight seven seven seven, right? Okay, now do you have other language results? So here is where the T T E F result, which is the French result, will come into play. Yeah, so now if you have another language result, you can't you can take it if you have the tef you can choose this but if you don't have let's assume uh i don't have yes so here is work experience guys you need to read this place you need to read this carefully you need to read it carefully so uh because it's going to be referring to foreign work experience and it's going to be referring to canadian work experience so you need to be very very careful here and let's have again know when i was talking about the types of um uh different pathway to canada i talked about the cec which is a canadian experience class yes those are for uh this pathway is for people maybe you study in canada and at the end of your program you're able to get uh, a, you get able to get a job yeah so you apply for express entry through canadian experience class so that means after spending one year as your place of work you can be qualified to apply and guys you're gonna have the highest points ever so let's continue in the last 10 years and guys i forget to mention this that to all to be before if you have like one year work experience one year foreign work experience it you are good to go but now that the point is extremely high guys you must have at least minimum of three years work experience minimum of three years foreign work experience that is your experience back home must be 
and must not be less than three years yes guys before you can and we're gonna see that as well here with your work experience in the in the last 10 years how many years of skilled work experience in canada guys can you see this uh can you see this in canada do you have so definitely you don't have any work experience in canada so you're gonna pick none because you don't have any work experience in canada and guys like i said earlier if you want to find not just anyhow any kind of uh, not just any kind of work experience actually fits in or is qualified to apply for canada experience entry no so if you want to find out if where you are working or your field fall, falls under this this is find your no care so you can just create you can just click on this let's see yeah so here is everything so you can read through this to get more understanding on what this knock is and mind you guys your knock must fall under uh, her your work experience must be skill type so your work experience must fall under a uh o a b or c and they've already defined what each time is so if your job is skilled level c or d like you can find it here everything you need is here so this is a, this is the knock code this is the title so yeah these are for skill level zero so guys you can just read through everything T skill level zero can you see for, for immigration purpose the main job groups are so these are the main job groups skill level zero management jobs such as restaurant managers my managers everything skilled level a professional jobs that are usually cost for degree every um it is a doctor dentist so if you have experience under this knock you are qualified to apply if you have experience under this under this you are qualified to apply so let's go back to the calculation guys please you can carefully read through carefully read through this so that just for better understanding and you can also go to the next page just for better understanding and we have another some uh, resources here too that you can that you can also view yes just for better understanding so let's continue now you've indicated that you don't have any work experience in canada so here is done for foreign uh, foreign experience so in the last 10 years how many total years of foreign skilled work experience do you have so this one is basically asking for your foreign experience is basically asking how many years of experience do you have in your own country and mind you guys read this it must have been paid can you see guys it must have been paid full time or an equal amount in part time and in only one occupation no skill or zero a or b so guys even c and d is not even qualified so please guys be careful when you are reading this and check your knock to see if it falls under and guys there are some job experience that if if you view the knock it might be kind of uh, let me go back if you do not it might be kind of related yeah you can't just work things around to fit it in yeah so let's say like i said earlier minimum of three years and nothing less uh if you have four years five years or more you can put it there yeah but let me choose just a minimum of three years oh uh, i changed this this is supposed to be known this is for canadian work experience oh, sorry guys so in the last 10 years how many total years of foreign uh, skilled work experience do you have so let me pick three years or more so do you have a certificate of qualification from a canadian province territory or federal body so guys this is basically referring to those that uh you know i made mention of provincial nomination the other time so this provincial nomination is basically when a province nominates you for to apply for express entry or to apply for canadian pr so once you are nominated this province is going to give you a certificate 
So this is this certificate it is is what is requested for in this number seven. So basically, if you receive any nomination certificate and everything, you can choose here. But now we did not receive any certificate, so I choose no. And here is an additional point. And again, guys, there is another thing I also forget to mention. And this is a job offer. There are some people that can get a job offer from outside Canada. Yes, guys. There are some people that get an offer, a job offer from outside Canada. And yeah, if you get a job offer from outside Canada, there are so many things the employer needs to do on your behalf. And one of which must file what is called L LMIA, which is the Labor Market Impact Assessment. So this employer must file this for you you understand so now if you have a job offer from outside canada you can also be qualified to apply for pr so if you have one this is what is requested for here uh-huh so now can you see a valid job offer must be full-time in a skilled job and everything so you should read through this a job offer isn't valid if your employer is an embassy guys just try to read more information on this so now we don't have any we don't have any valid job offer so i picked no so do you have do you have a nomination certificate from your province or territory guys i talked about this earlier the uh the nomination certificate i talked about but now we don't have any nomination certificate i picked no so do you or your spouse or common law partner if they will come with you to, to canada have at least one brother or a sister living in canada guys this is another additional point for you if you have a siblings in canada who is already a, a canadian permanent resident you are going to get additional 15 points from that person yeah so you're gonna get an additional so you when you read this this is what is requested for you're gonna get additional 15 points from this person uh so let me assume we don't have and again guys there is a point i don't know if uh okay i'm not sure if i think there should be a point whereby it's asking you if your spouse is also writing a language uh test um okay let's continue guys so this is we've got to the end of this calculator so now let's calculate our points so guys here is the breakdown of how each point is being awarded how it's been awarded can you see your age now because i pick 29 can you see the total points that is given to the age level your level of education which is the two or more certificate 128 your official language because we picked uh the minimum is total of 24 and how did this how was this calculated first official language is uh, 124 second which is the ISCS we took we did not pick anything for second and we don't have a canadian experience so the total for this woman capital factor is 362 so for the spouse factor level of education and yes guys if you if you if your spouse is having a higher level of education or anything or the spouse yeah this is what i was talking about the first official language if your spouse is also has also written um i mean if your spouse is also having an english test an English test you can include it here there are some people that their score is not up to points but they always try to boost their score also from uh, from their spouse if their spouse can also put in for the exam and able to pass is an additional point for them so here's a breakdown of everything foreign work experience you had 50 year Canadian and foreign work experience zero certificate zero you don't have a canada certificate is zero subtotal is 100 additional points to 600 if you have a provincial nomination you get points study in canada can you see guys if you study in canada and i'll be showing you again you get uh, a point civilians in canada you get another point french language skills guys will be looking into this so guys can you see 462 this is our total points 
and again guys let's view the last express and trade draw so here i think every two two weeks they there is always a draw every two weeks they call people that actually can you see the last draw guys 469 and according to the calculation we made this is a 462 so can you see that a person if the person is having this profile he or she is not still qualified because you don't meet you don't have up to this point which is the for the last draw was for 69 so the last the last draw is a uh, 469 and guys there's another thing called tie breaking rule so basically this tie breaking rule is uh you know there's there will be so many people that is having this 469 and there'll be so many people that are, that are even they so many people that that are having uh 469 and above like say 475 470 472 there are so many people that will be having 469 and above but let's consider those people that are having this 469 let's say 1000 people are having 469 definitely they can't choose all the 1000 uh, people so now they will use this tie breaking route to uh tie breaking rule to shed people off they already have the the total number of people see they are taking five thousand people already so they are gonna take four uh four seventy and above those ones are automatic but these people the people that are on four sixty nine on the dots they are gonna um reduce them using this tie breaking rule so basically this tie breaking rule means those people that are already in the pool i mean that they've created um they've created a, an express entry profile because guys it, before you can apply for canada express entry you need to have a profile so through this profile you are you submit your application so so they will consider those that have already been in this pool that they've created their profile and they've submitted I mean they've actually created their profile so those people that have created their profile that they created their profile in june 4 you understand those people that have created their profile in june 4 will all be selected so those people that created their profile after june 4 will not be considered just people that created their profile before uh june 4 will also be considered so basically those ones that created their profile after june 4 will not be considered yeah so guys basically this is a total point so you need that uh so now guys let's go back to where um okay guys so let me choose this marital status let me change it to married and see what will happen let me change it to married let me change to marriage. So, okay, so this is where it's going to ask is your spouse or common law partner a citizen or a permanent resident? So, if you have a spouse who is already a citizen or permanent resident, you can choose. But now let's choose no. So, will your spouse or common law partner come with you to Canada? Guys, if your spouse or common law partner will be coming to with you, definitely yes, he or she will be coming with you. So, how old are you? oh my god okay i thought we are starting all over again so how old are you let me just put it at 29 years old mm, uh, let's put that so more certificates have we any so this one is pre is already filled uh -huh. not applicable okay so now guys i i'm not gonna touch this uh um what's it called this ietsa a result i'm not gonna touch it um so let's go let's see what it's gonna give us okay so let's calculate our point let's recalculate our point oh let me see this what is the highest level of education for which your spouse or common law partner has okay we need to fill this too so depending on what your partner is having it might be a master's degree bachelor's degree but let's choose bachelor's degree so in the last 10 years how many years of skilled work experience in canada does your spouse in canada none 
we don't have any the disposal so basically this question is centered uh is is referring to your spouse did your spouse or common law partner take a language test if so which one you see guys so let's assume he or she did not take not applicable you understand so let's assume your spouse did not take let's now calculate the point you know initially it was 462 so see guys 443 can you see how being married can reduce your point so guys let's assume the spouse is having uh IETS result let's assume so now we need to enter our score uh the spouse score so let's use the minimum score as well speaking seven uh listening let's pick eight you must you mustn't have less than eight in listening guys if you have less than eight the result is useless and if you mustn't have less than seven again the, the result will be useless so seven writing seven so let's calculate you know now we are having 443 so let's calculate the point again so can you see guys just because the spouse is having a uh, an iss result can you see guys see from 443 to 463 so you should see the power of your spouse writing this exam so guys can you see that if your spouse is not write this exam the score is gonna be low and even for the fact that she's even she even, or he or she wrote this exam the point is not still up to this because let's say forget don't forget i told you the other time that the point is as high as 470. being 460 uh what's it letters being 469 is just for this year hopefully it's possible it is more than this starting from next row yes so guys yeah and if your spouse is still can still pass the higher tiers again it is cool guys so yeah so you, now i've also demo i've demonstrated how uh being married and uh being single how it can affect your point so guys let me go back to okay now let's say let's let me change this uh age let me choose something like 33 years of age and let's see the point so you're going to see how this age now this 33 years so you've actually lost from 35 points 31 10 points 32 15 points 33 so you've lost like 20 points so let's recalculate the uh, score and let's see calculate your score so can you see guys 20 points lost can you see so this is exactly what i'm saying that once you are 30 and above you start losing points so let me re let me return the this part to 29 let me turn it back to 29 and yeah let me return this back to single uh single and never married so let's see no no not applicable let's see let me calculate your point this is what we 490 there's something wrong somewhere okay i think here uh no what is level of education that you spouse? We're not supposed to have this. Um, no. Not applicable. Okay. This is not applicable. Let's try. I know there's something wrong somewhere. Yeah. So this 462. This is for to for being single. So guys, let me let me play with this IETS results. So now let me increase the score to 7.5 to basically nine. The highest score so far. I like, let me assume I'm having speaking maybe eight, probably eight. And you know eight still for it falls between 7.5 and 9. So let me assume I'm having eight in speaking. In listening, I'm having Mm, let me say also 
8 or 8.5 or yeah in reading let me say i'm having let me assume i'm having 8 and in writing let me assume also a high point so guys you know we're having 462 before so now let's calculate this point and see from 462 uh can you see guys 474 so now you've seen the power the power of having um a very high score ita score you see the power just as you're having a french exam you you see how high this score is going to be so basically you can see that even having two or more certificates now i did not include masters even having only two or more certificates and if you can score a very high uh score if you can have a very high score in this ietl exam guys you'll be good to go this is 470 uh four which is still way above the cutoff they expected this thing so guys that you can just play with this calculator and um yeah see let me change this to phd okay guys let me do this okay i've already talked about the age uh so now let's um let's calculate the points based on having a canadian degree yes guys uh so a master degree let me choose this what's your le highest level of education master degree have you any canadian degree diploma or certificate let me pick yes so choose the best answer to describe your level of education uh oh i want to see if i did not make any mistake okay here is master or a uh, doctorate yeah so official language uh official language canadian official language are english, uh, english and french are your test results less than two years old yes 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 uh yeah so here let me choose the minimum the minimum score which is the 877 eight reading seven writing seven yeah uh do you have no not like applicable work experience none and less than three that's a canadian work experience so guys can you see here it's mostly be less than uh three years yeah then guys you can also play with this put one year if you're having just one year work experience put it and calculate up your points to see so basically i'm just trying to show you possibilities you can play with this calculator as much as you can just try and play with it i can't show you everything yeah so basically having let me calculate the points can you see guys just having a canadian certificate having a canadian certificate see how high the point is 499 so i just hope uh yeah everything is everything was done correctly yeah study in canada can you see how many points you get just because you studied in canada just extra 30 points guys so there is nothing is um nothing can be compared to studying in canada guys and yeah you're having the opportunity to study for free if you don't have the financial capability you have the opportunity to study for free guys i strongly recommend if you are looking for a fully funded scholarship in canada I strongly recommend my course try to get it as soon as possible before the timer hits zero yeah so guys basically this is what i need to talk about today now you can basically you can actually see if uh you can actually know if you qualify for canada immigration trace presentry or not so please guys play with this uh two basically play with this two as much as you can play with it if you have any questions or any comments or any concern guys drop your questions in the description down below and i'm gonna be attending to all your questions drop it in the description down below and for the bcs and uh, the acca i'm gonna try to drop the link at the in the description box below so guys yeah i hope you guys will act as soon as possible 
I hope you guys will act as soon as possible. I always want and I always wish everyone is uh will be successful yeah in their immigration journey. So this is a very good opportunity for you. Yes, and guys, like I said earlier, um if you study in Canada, you are not gonna go through all the stress. Like because learning French is an additional work. Uh, also, the IETS, can you see, even with um, Canadian degree, you don't have to like bother yourself to have to, you, you just have the minimum required score and you are good to go. Just have the minimum required score and you are good to go, guys. So, yeah, so basically, this is what all I have. And yeah, the video is kind of long and I know that it's, it's filled with information. Yeah, so guys, I'm going to thank you so much for uh, watching. And yeah, if you are watching my video for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to turn on the post. Uh, don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Don't leave this page without subscribing. Remember, you have nothing to lose. Yeah, the subscription button is free. You don't need to pay anything. Yeah, the only thing you can do... To appreciate the uh, the information I've been given for free out there is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, guys, thank you so much for watching uh, today's presentation. If the free uh, guide is available, I'm gonna announce it on my YouTube channel. So, this is why you need to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So, I'm currently working on this ebook. Uh, it's going to be comprehensive just to guide you on how to start your immigration journey to Canada. Yeah, so guys, and don't forget, this is going to go for free. Nothing at that is going to go for free. This is just to uh, try as much as possible to help everyone out there. Yes, yeah, so guys, don't forget to subscribe, like I said earlier. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, see you guys in my uh, next video.